Good morning, folks. The sun is a binary star. Bet you're awake now. We've got some can't miss news today. Plus, things are getting interesting from the waters below to those above. Let's head over to spaceweathernews.com. We'll start by looking at the last 24 hours on our star. You'll see a couple of pops and coronal ripples over on the right side as the active region continues getting out his frustration while having turned away. But the real story in that realm is actually just facing Earth now. The sunspot we'd been discussing incoming is still all by his lonesome, but out ahead of him, new grouping was born center disk last night and is in Earth-facing position for the next 36 hours or so. It is a traditional lateral spreader, not much to speak of magnetically at the moment except for the beta class, and we have a little alert to watch for mixing potential as it develops in the central and back half of the grouping. Solar wind is calming down nicely now. That's the downtrend in purple, mostly the speedy stream waning at Earth. All is calm in Earth's magnetic field. That will change when the stream arrives from the central coronal hole here, likely to be in the next 48 hours, and the sooner it is, the better the chance for geomagnetic storm conditions. Looking a bit beyond that, our top threat will be from the incoming plasma filaments, kind of littered across the would-be tropical latitudes of the sun on the incoming segment there, eyes on them. So we had yet another giant wave impact yesterday. That makes Iran, South Africa, three at the west coast of Africa, and now New Zealand. This one is unquestionably due to the powerful low spinning nearby, which would also make yesterday's top rumble a bit of an earth spot quake, luckily not as scary of a quake report as the last two days. Folks, we're with the ESO zooming in on the Eagle Nebula and its flanking companions. This is from their VLT, which cleverly stands for Very Large Telescope. There are indeed a number of features in the images that merit further study and especially a closer look by well-versed EU proponents. The star birthing regions are always some of the most interesting, and speaking of which, they know magnetic fields always accompany star formation, but they had assumed it would be ordered and relevant to the formation process. ALMA thinks it sees uncontrolled and disordered magnetic field environment around this baby star here. And so while we're discussing baby stars, pulling the sun's baby book likely reveals a sibling, a twin. In fact, Caltech is pretty sure that all sun-like stars start as a binary system, but with one actually much bigger than its sibling, and then the stars are either supposed to split up or become close binaries, and FYI, the close line at these cosmic scales is above or below 500 AU. Folks, you can be sure this topic is getting major special attention on the website this week and weekend for the podcast. The sun is almost certainly a binary. Folks, last night's drawing for Observing the Frontier 2018 saw Dave Posh win two tickets, free hotel stay, and a travel voucher to attend the conference. We'll be doing more giveaways for those paying the most attention, and yes, for those podcast listeners who might be wondering, Dave did have the double entry. Someone please explain that whole thing in the comments today, please. I've got a binary star to ponder at the moment. We've got weather, wind maps, and shots of our star to close. We'll do this run again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.